It's the most tremendous new musical experience you can have. All right, what's up, y'all? It's Logan, and I'm finally back. That's right. So, um, real quick, just want to talk about it. The reason I haven't been posting videos in a while is because actually about three weeks ago, I started my first real job, you know? Uh, so I've been a little busy with that, you know, moving back into my place, my apartment, um, and getting started with my job. So I appreciate y'all being patient with me, but I'm back now. Uh, some of my vi some of my videos might slow down a little bit. I won't be doing a review video for absolutely every album. If I feel there's not enough to talk about, I might just do a quick review like I started and like we're doing here today to catch up um, leading into this release week. Uh, so that being said, we can go ahead and get into it with these quick reviews. I'm going to have very little to say about these. I'm mostly just going to be giving a short overview um, and a rating. Uh, so first, I'm going to start off with an album that I actually did not listen to until this past week um, mostly because no one talked about it I didn't even realize it had come out um, which it came out a while ago back in like March or something like that John Connor with SOS uh, now John Connor was a double XL freshman back seven eight years ago something like that and everyone was so excited to hear what he had um, I remember seeing him featured on Dre's Compton back in 2015 I believe it was but he hasn't released that much music. I think this is actually his first album in seven years. Um, he's coming out of Flint, Michigan, and you can see that influence. He's talking a lot about being the best rapper out of Michigan, whether that's true or not, of course. But he is really good and shows a lot of promise if he could just stay on top of putting out music. You know, This project comes with a lot of aggressive flows, some solid lyricism, some corny moments where you know he could, you can notice like he still has that influence as if he were putting this album out seven years ago. Uh, but nonetheless, it's still really good and really enjoyable, and I gave it an 8 out of 10. I thought it was a very solid project. Um, after that, this past weekend, we saw Blue and Exile drop their newest project called Miles. Um, now, this one focuses a lot on, um, like, of course, black people, African being Africans being the original people on Earth, um, being proud of that, um, also being in America and dealing with the racism that has to go along with that, um, but still being proud of where they are and wanting to make it a better place. Stuff like that. I thought this was another very solid project, as you have come to expect from Blue, of course, with him having a classic such as Below the Heavens, but then also um, his album that came out last year. You know, he is a very consistent artist that always comes with good lyricism, some good vibes to go along with that. Uh, it feels very old school, but with like that new school um, cleanliness to it. Um, overall, my only complaint with this one is that it is an hour and a half long, which is just too long for a project that isn't diving a little bit deeper, um, such as uh, Drogas Wave um, by Lupe, for example. That's one that I actually felt needed to be as long as it was. This one could have trimmed that back just a little bit, but nonetheless, I still went with an 8 out of 10 on this one. I thought it was a very solid project. Um, not one that I'm going to go back to that often just because it is a lot to sit through, but still. Um, now after that came Juice World with Legends Never Die. This came out about two weeks ago. Um, and man, y'all know I love Juice World. Um, I loved Goodbye and Good Riddance. I thought that was a very solid project with some very good melodies. I think he is a great singer um, whenever he gets into his emo trap phase. Um, I think his rapping is leaves a little bit to be desired, but it has its moments. And he actually is a pretty solid freestyler if you've seen his um, freestyles before. Um, I don't know if this is going to be his last album, of course, obviously this being his first posthumous album. I don't know if it'll be his last or not, but we'll see. Um, but that being said, this one had everything you could expect from a Juice World project, from um, him talking about how he knows he should stop doing what he's doing, very much so looking into the future, seeing what's going to happen to him almost. It's very like telling that he knew it was going to happen. He knew he shouldn't be doing all this, but he was doing it anyways. He knew it was going to be the death of him. Um, so it's sad to listen to, especially if you are someone who loves him. Like, what, he, he was only 10 months younger than me, I want to say. Yeah, 10 months. And that, that really hurt me, you know, seeing his first two albums. And, of course, I didn't like his second album, um, Death Race for Love, that much on on um, 
release, but now I go back to it so much and I love that album. Empty, Fast, you know, all those songs. Um, I miss them, man. It really hurts. Um, and this is a really good project. I really enjoyed it. I go back to it. I added plenty to my playlist. There are a few moments where songs didn't need to be on there, but I love it. I love the fact that he included, um, or they included, um, a couple of interviews of big name artists talking good about him, talking about how much potential he had and how sad it is to see him gone. And then I love that he actually had a uh, FaceTime um, from heaven where he addresses us as if he were dead, as if he knew it was going to happen. Though this is a really good project. And I go with a 7.5 out of 10 on this one. Um, really solid way to throw it all together and be a respectful posthumous album, of course. And then finally, another posthumous album, Pop Smokes, Shoot for the Stars, Aim for the Moon. Uh, the Deluxe actually just came out for this on um, Monday, This, of course, today being Tuesday. And yeah, this is another project that I really enjoyed. I did not like Pop Smoke, Pop Smoke's music going into this project. I don't like the American drill sound. I don't even love the UK drill sound, and of course, that's where it comes from. Uh, but I really enjoyed this project. That being said, this is his least drill project. This one has more of some melodies, some more singing on it. And he surprisingly has a decent singing voice. Of course, now he's not getting into actual harmonies and melodies like uh, Juice World. <laughs> I'm just going back to him. But, you know, he has a really solid sound. He has the ability to make some good hooks. And on this one, more than any other project, you can really see that 50 Cent um influence that he has spoken about in his past and especially the fact that 50 actually was so um, influential and so so important into putting this project together um, I really enjoyed this one there were a couple that I took um, away from this project let me see specifically songs like uh, got it on me the song where he um, interpolates um, many men by 50 cent I thought that was beautiful I really enjoyed that I enjoyed the song for the night uh, Lil Baby's verse was really good on there. The baby was okay. I enjoyed every Quavo feature. Quavo really killed it on this one, and that's um, saying something considering he has not been at the top of his game over the last two or three years, so it was awesome to see him come back. Uh, I, enjoyed this, I enjoyed the song Snitching, although that intro, can, while funny the first couple of times, can get a little annoying. Uh, Make It Rain was really good with uh, Rowdy Rebel. Um, the Woo, of course, having 50 Cent and Roddy Rich, that was really good as well. Um... So yeah, overall, I thought this was another very solid project and very well put together. I'm really glad that 50 Cent was able to do this. You can tell there are some moments where um, they only had one verse, so they kind of threw some features in there to make it into a song. But overall, very solid project again. And I don't know if this will be his last posthumous album or not. Again, you know, the Deluxe just came out with 15 extra songs on it. So you kind of get the feeling that might be the end of it all. Again, this kid was only 20, so there's only so much music he could have recorded. But that being said, I don't know what to expect. But I really am happy that we are getting these respectful posthumous albums. I'd rather us get albums while they're alive. I'd rather them still be alive, obviously. But it's good to see that they're not going the uh, X route where um they're just taking all their music throwing it together and just not being respectful of what their what the artist's vision would have been um so again with this one i am going with a 7.5 out of 10 as well just like i did on the juice world project end of the day i just got to say rest in peace to those two and then congrats to the other two guys that i talked about for putting out great projects uh, and i look forward to see what else they have coming forward um, that's all that I have to do to talk about music here. Expect me to be a little bit more active now that I have kind of gotten into the swing of things. There may be periods of time where I get more busy. Of course, there's only so much I can do right now being limited by COVID, but I'm doing what I can. Um, I, again, I appreciate y'all sticking through with me. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, comment your thoughts on these projects, comment any projects that you want me to talk about that I haven't, that I may have missed and didn't talk about in this video. I really appreciate y'all again. Um, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell next to my name for notifications and I will see y'all next time.